Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Interconnect 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in Las Vegas. This is The Cube. SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the event, extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier. My co-host Dave Vellante, kicking off day three of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Uh, day four days in Vegas is like, feels like 10 weeks. It's been coming up so many times. A lot of action here. Um, IBM's conference, new way to fill in the blank. New way to work, new way to do social, new way to do cloud, new way, really highlighting kind of the, the build-out phase of the cloud. You're seeing a lot of innovation around big data, internet of things, how should we put out the trending hashtags. It really is around the cloud, and big data, mobile, big part of that, Internet of Things, again, part of that. This is about building out the conference for developers, and you're seeing a lot of solutions oriented. Um, what do you think? I mean, what's your take so far? After two days, hearing the guests come in here, what's the theme, what's the story? A lot of customer success stories, but at the same time, they're putting out progress reports on their innovation. What's your take? New way to party, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> IBM Z folks, you know, there's, there's an interesting conversation we had yesterday with Ray Wang. I had brought up that about $25 billion of IBM's 90, whatever, five, six billion dollars of revenue is this new strategic stuff, and it's been growing at, let's say, 15, 16% a year. And Ray Wang made the statement that the balance of that, or the, that, that business has to grow at 40% a year to offset the declines in the balance of the business. And here's why I don't necessarily agree with that. Mainframe, <laughs> right? Nobody really talks about it except the mainframe guys. Not a big theme of the show, but you know the old saying, John, what's good for GM is good for the country, good for America. Well, what's good for the mainframe is good for IBM. IBM's entering a new mainframe cycle. It takes you know, multiple years, three to five years to develop a new mainframe, and it's hitting the cycle. We talked to people at the Z announcement that said that they're basically going to be buying those sight unseen. Why is this relevant? Why is it important when we're here talking about cloud and mobile and everything else? Two things, one is, from a marketing standpoint, IBM can talk about how it's modernized the mainframe, it's all true. Uh, but from a financial standpoint, as the mainframe goes, it really is a great business for IBM. Why? Because it's high margin, it drags along software, it drags along uh, other services. And so, I think that's going to be a little hidden secret of IBM's business this year. Just like when Windows, when Microsoft comes out with a new Windows release, everybody was surprised, were you shocked? that Microsoft all of a sudden has started throwing off more cash with the Windows upgrade cycle? No, you weren't surprised. Same with the mainframe. That's going to buy IBM time to bridge the gap between all the strategic initiatives, cloud, mobile, analytics, social, big data, bridge the gap between the new stuff and the old. Dave, I got to talk about IBM's place in history. You mentioned your mainframe. That's a good point. The mainframe to me is the secret weapon here, the, the, here, the story that no one's really talking about on the mainstream press. It is the backbone of IBM. It's the computing industry. This is their, their heritage, but it's evolving into something bigger for them. They're modernizing it. It's, it's big iron. That's a term that, that, been, that has been called the old glass house mainframe days. But now in a distributed computing market, big iron means performance. And I think that's a big thing. The second thing is blue mix. Blue mix is getting significant momentum and a lot of energy is un underneath that. IBM's putting a lot of wood behind the arrow in, in cloud. Energy, patents, and again, you, you know, this morning, top news, Apple was told by a jury to pay a half a billion dollars on a patent trial. They'll appeal, of course. They got tons of cash. But patents, IBM's got a ton of patents. Apple is twice the value of the next public company. So IBM, they, can they be like Apple? I mean, in the sense from a value standpoint, IBM was once the gold standard in terms of stock price. You can't go wrong with buying IBM. You can't go wrong with IBM blue chip stock. Obviously, they got, they're doing some things there. Apple certainly showing the business model is direct to consumer. Just kind of, as a company, they have to get their, well, their products together and deliver solutions that have high margin. Well, it's, it's a really good point you're making, but again, when you go back to the sort of Gerstner days, the, the mainframe sort of gave them, bought them time to invest in things like e-commerce and WebSphere and their software business, and, and, and I think I see the same thing happening here. I think the big question, John, is what does IBM come? I mean, it was largely, even though they didn't market it that way, but it was largely a services company the past decade. Okay, can it be, your, your question about can it become like Apple, Apple's a product company. Can IBM come, become a product company? And, and other than the mainframe, you know, what's the product that IBM has that is the number one product that you associate with leadership 
in the marketplace. Well, would you argue that Apple's a solution? It has a collection of products. I'm an Apple user, I got an iPhone, I got, an, I'm, I got a Mac, I might buy the watch, I'm wearables come around the corner. The solution is lifestyle, it's computing. So, so I would argue that products have to be there to make the solution. So, well, you, but, but Apple's yeah. got great products, right? It's got the best phone, it's, got the, it's going to have the best watch, it's got the best pad. Well, IBM traditionally always had great products. They were the leader, but now you got to argue and say, okay, why isn't those products leadership turning into value and solutions? You could say products need, need to be moderni well, modernized, solutions need to be, need to be tightened up Let's a go bit. through it, let's go through it. Who's got the best cloud? Amazon. Okay, who's got the best database? <laughs> well, I would argue open source. Oracle, in terms of industrial strength. Who's number one in database? Um, <laughs> open source. Okay, <laughs> yeah, all right, maybe. <laughs> who's number one in storage? Uh, EMC. All right, who's number one in mainframes? IBM. Okay. <laughs> Go through the list, right? Well, who's, I mean, number one, who's, who's number one in apps? How big is the mainframe market? Who's number one in apps? I, I don't know. Okay, but no, this, I, is my I don't know. this is my point. How big is it? So, can IBM, or does it want to become a product company again? It used to, it used to be. So you think the database company is Oracle? Well, it is. Oracle is the number one database company. How do you, yeah. Well, I mean, it is, right? Now, is, is it going to be Facebook affected? Is it going to be affected by open source? Absolutely, right? Apps? All right, so you what, throw Microsoft somewhere. So how would you rate IBM's product portfolio? You know, Jeremy Burton at EMC well, said to me in a crowd chat, how are the portfolio? IBM, IBM right, well, so, has always had these different divisions. So this is what, in my opinion, when, when, when Gerstner chose to go after services, he said we're going to be number one in services, okay? He chose to say, okay, we're going to have good products, great products across the portfolio. We may not lead in any one category except maybe mainframe, but we're going to have great products, best of breed. So their portfolio is fantastic. Okay, so that's the, the question is, what do they want to be right, in this next era? Do they want to be the number one product company? Do they want to be the number one solutions company? Number one cloud company? Here's my thing. I think, I, here's my take on and what I think. I think IBM needs to own the cloud all in. They need to go in and do whatever it takes to pull out the patents, reorganize. We heard that from Nancy Pearson yesterday. The cloud is the critical link. Blue Mix, they're playing with the Cloud Foundry, the foundation, I get that, it'll accelerate, but they need to come in, grab the Play-Doh, shape it up, and own Cloud, and deliver, deliver everything on the Cloud, and then they got to win the big data solution battle. So, okay. And we heard that from Doug Bailoff, he nailed it. Drowning in data, consumption of utility computing, whether on-prem, off-prem, and Blue Mix and the Cloud division is critical. Everything else would be the pacing item off the cloud. Yeah, so, so what, what I'm calling cloud a product. So I really believe, so why is it, John, that Oracle always talks about IBM, and why is it that Sam Palmasano said, I don't worry about HP, I worry about Oracle? It's because of R&D, and the key in this business, it's a, the technology business, you have to take R&D and you have to translate R&D into product that sells, or solutions that sell, right? And you have to cycle those products very, very quickly because obsolescence will kill you in this business. That's why Apple's doing so well, obviously on the consumer side, that consumer mentality is coming to the enterprise, it's here, and that I think is IBM's big opportunity. Look at Watson, it's spending money like crazy in R&D. The Steve Mills billion dollar playbook play, that is the key, in my opinion, to IBM's future. Can they execute on that and turn that billion dollars of R&D into product, quickly cycle into the marketplace and leadership. That will drive cash flow and that'll drive competitiveness. So again, IBM, let's, talk, let's look at this from a big picture standpoint and it's interesting, Dave. They got a lot of work to do. I mean, if you look at the different divisions, they got a boatload of work to do. Now, I mean. Let me ask you a question. You kind of asked Ray Wang this yesterday. You're sitting down with Ginny, right? You're in the boardroom, you're, you're addressing the IBM board. What would you do? What would you tell them to do? Well, I would ask her, hey, Jenny, you want me to sugarcoat it? Or you want me to no, no, come tell on. you the straight you, Of course, you don't even have to ask that question. Give it to me okay. straight. Here's what I would do. All in on the cloud, win the cloud business, number one, okay? You got to own the cloud. You got to clean up the bureaucracy uh, internally for, for agility. Uh, you got to go faster. You got to own the big data fabric, not necessarily be the solution provider. I think the Apple deal and what they're doing with Twitter is the partnership. I think the collaborative nature of kind of partnering with those big whales is right on the way. So do what you're doing now, but do it faster. I would put the mainframe out as big iron. I would market the hell out of that as big iron. I'd the winning, get the God box. I would market the hell out of the mainframe, but you got to win the cloud like in the next 12 months. I mean, you just can't like, you got to go faster. And what does that mean? Developers, resources, and everything. The storage group, you got to go to storage and clean up storage and make storage the epicenter of the action. Make storage products mainstream, make them relevant, and go after EMC and just put out a great product on storage. And let the middleware stuff evolve around that, and, and I think that was, was what I would so do. So wouldn't they say, John, aren't we doing those things? 
Yeah, I think yeah, the answer is yeah. yes. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's just fun fundamentally. You just laid out. You know, maybe there's a couple of things we, we missed, but you just fundamentally laid out. The well, I'd also tell her, keep the buybacks going, strategy. keep Wall Street, throw the wolves meat, you know, do the buyback thing. I have no problem with the buyback. People argue that. That's a financial How engineer. How can you not do that? You, that's like, you, you don't pass the intelligence test if you don't do stock Yeah, but why do you want to have a days. distraction on execution? You want the wolves, wolves of Wall Street, you want to throw them in the cage and feed them the, feed them the red meat, do the buyback, control the, the flow, do all those financial engine things to keep the returns going and heavily move the R&D needle forward and focus all the execution internally to straight and narrow on cloud and everything around big data. And you know everything else falls in that. If you look at Internet of Things, if you look at what this what was trending on, on, um, on Twitter today, Dave, you'll see exactly the conversation space, right? The conversation space around the customers is, you know, DevOps, cloud, Internet of Things, big data, uh, and a lot of other marketing stuff, new way to work, it's just, you know, directional marketing. But the meat on the bone is cloud and big data, and everything else, Internet of Things, mobile, all are part of that fabric. So I would own the fabric, own the cloud infrastructure as a utility vehicle, and just absolutely not let Amazon get an inch in, the, in my client base. That's what I would do. What, right, would John, do? what would you do? I think I would, I would do a number of the things that you talked about that, that they're doing. I, but I also think you're right. They, the, my big issue with IBM is, I said it before, they've got to translate that R&D into product. Right now, we've, we've, we're seeing that with Watson, but it's not consistent across all the divisions. You mentioned storage, for example. Uh, take, it, take that as a good example. They've got to take their R&D and, and accelerate the product life cycles. Why is a company like EMC lead in a market like storage? It's because it's got tons of products coming out. Now, IBM Software Group, I think, does a really good job there. The other thing I would do if I were IBM is I would figure out a way to consolidate, maybe through that middleware layer, all my SaaS applications. I think they've got to have a Fusion-like initiative, Oracle Fusion-like initiative, to integrate the top of that stack, the SaaS apps. That's to me a huge opportunity for IBM, and it's a big pill to swallow, but I think it's something they've got to do. Okay, we will be right back after this short break with our next guest. Day three of wall to wall coverage. Again, full schedule today here inside theCUBE. We are at the IBM Go Social Lounge. Go to interconnectgo.com. That's the social experience, the digital experience website. That's powered by the crowd. All the video feeds are there from the sessions, the, the keynotes. Uh, and the cube and some of the developer action. Again, three channels of video. The rest is powered by the VIP influencers and powered by the crowd. Amazing good stuff on there. Trending stories from the crowd, by the crowd. That's a crowdsourced social experience. And again, if you want all access to some you know, deep IBM stuff, you can sign up for that as well. But really, it's, it's a great place to find out what the crowd's doing, what the influencers are saying, and what's going on here at the show. So go to interconnectgo.com. This is the cube. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>